<laughs> Welcome back to the third episode of Frack the Cannon with me, your host, Renee Mendoza, and joining us from LA, as always, CJ McCree. What's up, CJ? How you doing? <laughs> All right, thank you, CJ. So, <laughs> looks pretty kind of frozen, huh? Yeah, you froze a little bit. So, we'll be having some of that. That's awesome. That's okay. So, this week we'll be talking about a couple of things uh, Trainwreck with Amy Schumer, uh, Mission of TJ, you saw Mission Impossible 5, which you told me was pretty good. Uh, and then Arkham Knight, you have stuff to talk about. And then I brought in a quick portrayal of the Compton and the CDs of NWA. We'll be talking about that. Alrighty, so CJ, go ahead and talk to me. Uh, we have a clip for um, Mission Impossible. If you can please uh, roll that clip whenever you're ready. No, 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 no. Well, that looked awesome. I have no idea what happened in that, in that uh, <laughs> scene. So what happened, dude? What happened? Let us know what happened in that. All right, well, yeah, that, that's actually one of the better scenes in the movie. That's um, one of the classic, uh, what I like to call, one of those classic Mission Impossible moments. Ever since the first one, they have, like, those moments where it's like, all right, they have this impossible thing that they have to do in order to make it work, and, like, you can only do so much, and, like, it, it, <laughs> it, it measures your weight and your eyes and your, you know, everything, you know what I mean? Like, so that was from, like, that one scene uh, in the movie that's in, like, every Mission Impossible franchise. Um, basically, they have to like. It's something crazy. Like they, they, the only way they can get into a building is, is through the water, and and the water will shut off if it, it yeah, if it detects any metal. So he can't wear like an oxygen tank. So he has to hold his breath for like three minutes, I think, <laughs> and do like something else. Um, so you know, it's like classic classic mission impossible moment um but you know um I, as i talk with renee a lot um you know i'm a sucker for a good action movie i love action movies um and mission impossible 5 does not disappoint if you're a mission impossible fan um it's definitely a good movie um i for one i just a slight bit like uh ghost protocol slightly more than i like rogue nation um, but Rogue Nation is an excellent movie. I really love the plot. Um, it's very, it's different for a Mission Impossible movie. Um, it centers around a, well, what's called a Rogue Nation. Um, it's like a group of counter spies, basically, who were made and put together specifically to target the IMF. And uh, if you guys, are, you know, follow Mission Impossible, obviously you know who the IMF is. It's led by Ethan Hunt, starring Tom Cruise. Um, <laughs> and I did, before I watched the movie, I did watch a little HBO short, um, and they were talking about the stunts that they were doing and that they were actually, like, you know, real stunts. Um, like, one of the popular uh, scenes from the trailer, um, they show, like... Um, a plane taking off and Tom Cruise is hanging on the side. Well, they actually hung him on the side of the plane, you know, and actually did that stunt, um, which is crazy. And then they said they did it like they shot it like nine times, you know. So it's like, but um, Wait, they shot it nine no, it was, times. Say that again. They shot it nine times. They shot it nine times from from take from like takeoff to landing the plane. That's like uh, they hung Tom Cruise on the side of a plane and actually took off. You know what I mean? Right. And flew, like um, which is crazy <laughs> when you think about it. Was it at least um, cool? Like was it, was it cool? Like it's. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it played excellent, you know what I mean? Like, it looked good. It wasn't worthless, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, it wasn't like, oh, they did it, and it was a stupid part of the movie, no. I mean, it wasn't a very big part, but, it, you know, it looked great. Um, and, it, you know, it was it was an excellent movie. Um, Simon Pegg is hilarious, as always, in the movie. You know, he uh, he did really good. Everybody's back. Every, everybody that you really care for that's part of the team is back, you know. Um, Alec Baldwin is a new addition as the head of the CIA, and he's sort of a uh, sort of an antagonist, or more more like a 
threshold guardian i guess if you speak film lingo <laughs> i know there. what you mean our two fans out there in the audience um, Hi, Mom. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. But, no, yeah, I, um, you know, it's an excellent movie, um, and I would highly recommend it. I don't even think we even have a rating system, do we? <laughs> we, just... all, we don't. We really don't. We just do it. Like This show exists just so we can talk and we can show people that we have a show. Just to show our charisma. That's why this show exists. Like, there's no real reason for this show. <laughs> um, all right, so let me ask you this. I love Gold Protocol. I think it's the best out of all the Mission Impossible movies. You said it's slightly better, so but how, how much better though? Do you think? Because that's not by much, not by much. Okay. Like it's about the same enjoyability, I would say. Okay. Um, I like Ghost Protocol. Ghost, I like Ghost Protocol slightly more because um, I like the story and I I think that the humor brings something special to that one, you know. Right. Um, but Rogue, Rogue Nation, um, I think I like the story in Rogue Nation a little bit better than the Ghost Protocol story. Um, and I mean, it's just it's just it's it's just a good movie. I just I just prefer Ghost Protocol um, <clears throat> for no certain reasons. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that that, that just... lady that 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 sidekick was awesome. She was pretty. She was yeah, pretty. Yeah, you know. And go <laughs> The thing about Ghost Protocol is it's more of a fun movie. Okay. Um, Rogue Nation is still fun, but it's more serious, definitely, in tone. Okay. I'm definitely going to check it out. Um, something I definitely want to see. But not yet. Not after I see Fantastic Four straight out of Compton. So, okay, so that's your... Anything else you want to add about Mission Impossible 3 before I move on to my review? Um, if you like action movies and Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible, go see it, I guess. <laughs> My selling point is Simon Pegg. Like, you can't go around with Simon Pegg. Um, all right, so what I saw, Trainwreck with Amy Schumer. With all right, so here's the, Amy. All right, so roll the clip. What's up? Is that wine in a box? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is this guy ever going to shut up? Mm, please watch the movie. Oh. Stop knowing it's not right. Don't do this to me. Why is he yelling? Listen, you always do this to me. You, you show up to these places, you put me in a situation. I'm a big guy. Everybody wants to fight the yeah, big guy. Yeah, you are. Hey, uh, Mark Wahlberg, shut your bitch up. Mark, Mark Wahlberg? Me? Who else looks like Mark Wahlberg? Your girl? So that scene, I, was, I found it to be very, very funny. I thought it was a little bit, I'm like, whoa, what the hell? Like, she's, it's the stereotype of black people talking in theaters, but it's a white couple talking in theaters, and I found it really hilarious. That movie was really funny. I like Amy Schumer. I'm not a big, big fan, but I think she's really funny. And I was surprised by how much I actually enjoyed it. I laughed. I cried. I learned. I loved. <laughs> no, I'm not, <laughs> that's not true. But that, that I couldn't even hear that clip, and I thought it looked hilarious. <laughs> I didn't even know what was going on, but it, it looked funny. <laughs> there was no audio? All right, well, then I guess I'll have to post that. Um, not a problem. Um, but pretty much it's about Amy Schumer's character named Amy, who who from a, a, her early childhood, her parents got divorced. And her dad played by Colin, Colin Quinn, and I love Colin Quinn. Like, to me, one of my favorite comedians, one of my favorite SNL uh, news updates anchors. And uh, pretty much saying that monogamy isn't real, monogamy is just an illusion. And they all, she grew up with that. And pretty much, she's, John Cena is her main guy, she's seeing, but she's still having sex with other people. And he's trying to be a little bit more serious. And John Cena is surprisingly really, really funny. Like, he delivers the best lines in the movie. Um, but that, that that was a funny clip. I recommend you go see it. it, it it's no different than any other romantic comedy. Like, it's pretty much the same thing. She breaks up with her main guy. She meets up this awkward... They become friends. They have a fight. And then they all it all ends happily ever after. Uh, it was... I did enjoy it. It was nice to see. It was the girl's point of view and not the guy's. Um, I, yeah, and that was it, pretty much. I, I liked Amy Schumer. And it's, that's the reason why I had to go see it. And I wanted nothing else to watch in the movie that day. I just wanted to get out of the house. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, it that's, looks that's, funny. It, it, it's really funny. Like, there's the one scene where you see they're, they're having sex and you see John Cena's butt. So for the ladies who love John Cena, he's that has, you see his butt naked in there. We can always count on you to find those moments in the movies. You know me, CJ. You know me too well. That's why we're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that's anything you would like to add? Any questions you have about this? 
Nah. Nah. All righty. So now we're moving on. <laughs> now we're moving on to the meat of what you really want to talk about, Arkham Knight. We have a clip for Arkham Knight, and I know you're all about. So can we roll that clip, please? Dark days are here, Batman. The prophecy has come true. From the ashes of Arkham City, the fires are raging, and Gotham is burning. I can see that same fire in your eyes. Before this night is through, that fire will consume you. This show should be called Copyright. <laughs> or copyright by still like copyright. <laughs> So tell me, CJ, what did we just watch there? Okay, so you just watched. <laughs> 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 all right, anyways, it, all right. So you just watched a, a chunk of. For, okay, first of all, the Arkham Knight trailers are all titled, right? All right, mm -hmm. so that is the third Arkham Knight trailer, and that's that is titled "All Who Follow You." Right, because um, I, I don't know, you know, they're being pretentious or whatever. Um, but um, if there was a game I would geek out about, I guess it would be the Spider-Man version of this game because I like Spider-Man. But <laughs> Batman, Ar I've always thought the Arkham series is the quintessential Batman experience, uh, more so than reading the comics. I mean, you, it requires that you read the comics, but more so than reading the comics, more so than watching any of the movies. Um, or the cartoons, the Arkham series really puts you in the place of the Dark Knight. Um, it make it challenges your mind to solve um, random crimes. You know, I mean, sometimes like you're solving like a serial killer murder. Um, sometimes you're solving Riddler's riddles. Um, sometimes you know you're chasing down you know Two Face and his thugs, or you know what I mean. Like you're using the back computer, um, and in this. Uh, iteration, their big addition was the Batmobile. Um, you've always you, you could see the Batmobile in the previous games, but you couldn't get in it and drive around. Um, but in this uh, in this version of the game, the Arkham Knight, um, you can now drive the Batmobile. Um, you can you know tear around the whole city, and you pretty much have a huge chunk of Gotham City to kind of just play around in. Um, and the but. Uh, the stories have always been good in the Arkham series, um, but this one, I don't know what they did. I don't know what was on the water, but they really stepped it up this one. There are times when I'm, when I'm playing this game and I wish that I was watching it instead, um, like as a movie or like a cartoon or something, because it, like the story is just that good and that engaging. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I don't even want to put it down. I don't even want to have to do some kind of mission to get more stories like no i just want to watch this like this is excellent um so it, ta uh, it uh, takes place um obviously after the events of arkham city which is the second game um and uh for those of you who played arkham city um we well, you know in this story um that at the end of arkham city the uh, joker dies um and so at the beginning of this one there's like a, you know there's sort of the aftermath of that you know what would happen something that the comics could never really touch on is like what would happen in a world where batman exists but joker doesn't anymore you know um and so scarecrow is kind of the big bad guy that you're facing scarecrow uh, but there's you know uh, yeah scarecrow is like the big bad guy that you're facing in this okay. one um and I kind of, when I first heard that with the previews, I was I was kind of turned off because it's like, all right, I spent the last two games fighting the Joker, which is one of my favorite villains of all time, um, and definitely the best Batman villain and his arch enemy, you know. Um, so I'm like, well, how are we gonna follow this up with Scarecrow? Um, but it does a really good job at uh, a making Scarecrow foreboding, but you know, his threat isn't the only threat that you're facing um scarecrow's partnered up with uh the titular character of the of the of the game um this character called the arkham knight mm. 
Um, and he is meant to be, his identity is meant to be a mystery to you. Um, and over the course of this night, each of the games all take place in one night. Um, but over the course of this night, um, you know, you're, you're facing him, you're facing off against this character, the Ark of Night, who seems to know who Batman is and seems to know how Batman does his thing. So he's always a step ahead of Batman, you know, of you as you're doing things and, you know, different, um, it also pr presses the envelope a lot too. Um, it's it's very like at your seat kind of story, you know, very suspenseful story. Um, you know, there's different things. Uh, you know, you um, this is a world where uh, Batgirl, the Oracle, or whatever is. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> oh wow, that, that's excellent. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Hold on, where did it go? <laughs> It's my phone case. All right, oh, continue. Anyways, that's the only time we I have. Yeah, no, I no. <laughs> it totally derailed me. No, let's talk about it. No, I'm joking. Anyways. <laughs> but um, no, so this is a world where, uh, you know, I know in the comic universe, uh, uh, Barbara Gordon is Batgirl again. Mm. But this is a world uh, where she's still the Oracle. She's still crippled. Um, and, um, you know, she, she even gets kidnapped during the course of the game. And, and it challenges you to choose how fast you try and track her down, you know, um, and it gives you like a sort of set of consequences as well. There are multiple endings to this game, mm -hmm. um, depending on how you play it as well. Um, and, you know, much like they made the people, they there are four Arkham games um, in this series, oh, okay. but uh, Rocksteady, is, who is the maker of this Arkham game, uh, made the first one and the second one and this one. So they sort of have this trilogy um, that they kind of completed with this one. Um, and, you know, it very much feels like very final mm -hmm. um, in everything that's going on. Um, you know, even in that trailer I showed you, the reason I chose to show that um, is because of some of the things that, they, uh, that the, the guy who's narrating says, you know, um, you know, it's very like it's a very trying night for Batman. And it's going to cause him to push his limits. And you don't know if this is going to be the time when he goes oversteps his bounds and uh, and break that one rule that he has. We all know that Batman has is he won't kill anyone. Um, but, you know, they're his enemies are really gathering together to, to see if they can push him over the edge and there's a lot going on in this game um a lot of nods to a lot of famous comic book story arcs mm -hmm. you know um there's a little bit of hush in there there's a little bit of dark knight returns in there a little Ooh. bit of under the red hood in there um Ooh. even a not even a, a cameo to like the killing joke even as voiced by mark hamill Ooh. oh and that's the best part is mark hamill's back as the joker oh dude all right <laughs> but, um, that's, that's awesome uh, but i won't tell you in what capacity is um, because that's like one of the coolest uh, moments in the game as, as you find out, you know, I mean, how he's in there. He's not, he's not back to life or something goofy like that, but like his voice flashback? is in the game. As the... I'm getting the um, flashback from the sound of it. Uh, it's, well, it's, it's weird. Uh, okay. A dream? <laughs> it is it a dream? to explain it all anyway. Okay. Um, but, you know, I mean, if I could give that game like a 10 out of 10, I would totally give it a 10 out of 10. It's very enjoyable it's very exciting like and i'm not i'm just talking about the story i'm not even talking about all the stuff you can do as batman in there you know um but um yeah i can't can't geek out enough about arkham knight it is an excellent game so i've heard a lot about things about these games everyone told me to play i would love this game from arkham asylum when it first came out and they told me what it was to me you're a, you're a sleuth you're pretty, you're pretty much batman you have to discover riddles but i i fear that if i ever play these games, I would never get anything done. Like I would come to work, sleep, eat, and then play the game all day. How far am I from that? Like it, it sounds awesome, but I just, and I don't have a PS4 yet, but <laughs> should, I start with, should I start with game one or should I, can I pick up from, from any game for those who haven't played? Uh, well, I would say this. You can pick up from any game. It does a good job at catching you up. Uh, but the story does continue from game to game. Okay. And it does... Everything that happens in each game is something... Everything that happens after the first one builds on what happened in the first one. Um, so it's like, no, you don't need to. But, you know what I mean? Like, it would... You know what I mean? The story would, you know be better if you played all three of course um okay 
But you said they said that there was four games, and so and there, which was the one that I, that I'm right. Um, so right, okay, so. Rocksteady is the game studio that made Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight. Okay. Um, there was WB Games. Now, they publish it. Um, there was a another game before Arkham Knight, and it was called Arkham Origins. It wasn't made by Rocksteady, mm. um, but it's still in the same um, timeline. But it was called Arkham Origins, and it was meant to be a prequel to Arkham Asylum. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, Got it. No, I haven't played that one. And it's generally regarded as the worst out of the whole series. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's still enjoyable from okay. what I hear. All right. I'll, I'm, I'm going to play him eventually. But going back to Mark Hamill being the Joker, did you hear that he's going to be doing a, a DC animated movie of The Killing Joke and he's coming back to be the Joker for that, for that show? I, I did hear that, and I was wondering if they were somehow connected. Um, because he does a because there's a nod to that in the game, you know. Um, but the, yeah, no, that that pleases me to no end. <laughs> I he does Joker it. like nobody else. I like ah, that's what I did when I heard that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, if they do him, I hope, I hope they bring back Kevin Conroy for that to be Batman. Like it's gotta be it's gotta be him, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill doing those voices for that story. That story is one of the best stories. Of comic book, of well, not Kevin, Batman. Conroy, Kevin Conroy is not going anywhere. He's <laughs> he's like Batman for the long haul. Like I think he'll be Batman until like his voice just dies <laughs> before he does. And then he'll start doing Stephen Hawking, <laughs> the Stephen Hawking voice. <laughs> All right. All right. righty. So we are running. We ran a lot of time. So one last clip before we go. Um, movie I want to see from this band right here. If we can get this. Uh, straight out of Compton from NWA. If we can roll that clip very fast. Thank you. You had the chance to change the situation. Would you take it? People are scared of you guys. You have a unique voice. The world needs to hear it. They want NWA? Let's give them NWA. Glamorize gangs and drugs. Our art is a reflection of our reality. So, CJ. Uh, I was okay. I'm sorry. Okay, I had a miscommunication there on my end. Um, CJ. So you, have you, 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 we talked about NWA. Have you heard any NWA music or CDs? Like you, you know of Ice Cube and Dr. Dre, but have you heard any of their songs? Like, yeah, I've, I've heard. I know NWA. Okay. I've heard them. I, I, I don't want to assume I'm anything. <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I remember when I first heard these CDs. Uh, I remember I, I was like 14 or 15 when I bought all their CDs and just reading their, their 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 bio about them, about like what happened, like how they formed, and how because of money, their uh, money issues, Ice Cube left, and then they kind of started the strife. And then Paul Giamatti, who plays Jerry, I forget the last name. Joe Paul Giamatti is an awesome bad guy. He always plays. A character, a, 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 for lack of a better, an asshole that that's kind of lovable. But the guys, I, I've always wanted to see this movie, and I, I, I don't know what to say. I have so many things I want to say about this that I really, really can't get all out in a coherent, cohesive sentence. But this movie looks really, really good, and it's something I've been looking forward to since I first heard about it, like last year. I just want to get that out there and, and express myself, like NWA said. <laughs> that's all I have. I, I want to see it too. I, I, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I've been interested in seeing. Uh, I mean, we've never seen a '90s movie yet. You know, I mean, we see '80s movies all the time. Yeah. We see '70s movies. Yeah, no, that's like good. period. Yeah, this is but yeah. but this is funny too because this is also an '80s movie too. It came out. Trailer Company came out in '88, and then uh, all right, and most of the but that's still though. The 90s. <laughs> Did you still the '90s? That's still not the '90s. It is. <laughs> yes, 88. The 90s, every decade is a take on just the end of the decade before it. <laughs> That's too All right, anywho. But I, I just love it. I, I also, the reason why I want to see it is because there's so, the famous song, F the Police, and with current events that, that's happening recently, I think I think it's a timely movie, too, that, that this movie comes out at the same time 
things are happening in the, in the United States. Um, I, I hear we have like two minutes left. Any last words on the new show this, this episode that you want to say, get out? Um, Ant-Man was cool. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have one minute left. Alrighty, Atman was not cool. Should have been Edgar Wright. <laughs> and then next episode, we'll start naming it Copyright Violation Show. Because we copyright we violate so many copyrights in this episode. Like might as well. <laughs> so I guess that's it. If they, thank uh, thank you. If you want our me. money, take it from me. <laughs> yes, take take all my bills. Take it, take it all. Alrighty. Adios. That's the uh, ending music to this is the ending music to our show. This is the ending music to our show. This is Wait, keep humming, ending. keep humming. <laughs> I think every episode now on we do that, CJ. That is the that's how we end the show. 